In this video, I will give you a quick rundown of the rules for a Hellboy, the board game. This came just out of the Kickstarter and the retail game is hitting the shelves just about now and there will be a Let's Play coming soon on our channel. So I thought it would be a good uh, idea to uh, actually tell you how this game is played. Hellboy the board game is uh, what you call a dungeon crawler. It's a uh, cooperative game where you will play uh, as a team of paranormal investigators and you will be solving cases, different paranormal cases. Each game of Hellboy starts by you choosing the agents uh, who will play the game. In this case, I have here Hellboy and Ape Sapien. You will also take their character cards, which tell you their special abilities. There are up to four uh, agents uh, can play the game at the same time. And you will also pick what you call a case file. So a case file is a, basically a scenario uh, that will tell you what is your mission in the game, because there is no generic uh, mission, there is no generic game objective. Instead, each scenario uh, will give you different objectives, it will tell you, it will progress, you will progress through this deck and that will uh, inform you on what's the next step that you should do. Since we have uh, chosen the case file, this one is called Eviction Notice, uh, the card will also tell you um, what you can expect, so there is a little bit of story on the, on the front and then you have a challenge rating, this one is easy and duration is short. So this is, this is the, I, I set up here the introductory game. So once you have read uh, through the first card of the uh, case file, you flip it and this thing will tell you how you should set up the game. And I have done that already. So I have prepared the dungeon or the rooms that uh, we will be uh, walking through and uh, exploring them. This is my HQ board. So HQ board has several things to it. Uh, there is an impending doom tracker and you will set up the tracker symbol on the first point there. Uh, when it reaches certain uh, number, stuff will happen. Then we have the uh, investigation tracker. I will also set it up on the first place on that board. Next, uh, the, the case file tells me that I need to prepare the deck of doom. Deck of doom is this. And it tells me that I need to take uh, gray, red and uh, blue cards from the, from the list of the cards and also the cards for the individual agents. These will pop out every turn and basically will uh, present uh, different new threats. And I will put it here into the deck of doom spot. And the last thing, well, is it the last thing? We'll see. Uh, I will uh, also create an encounter deck. I did it again based on the mission card and uh, what you do uh, with that. Again, choosing symbols um, that are told to you by the mission card. You will deal these into the rooms. If you have any leftover, you would put them here because sometimes the layout of the dungeon changes and uh, then you know you need to deal new uh, new cards to the new rooms so we have also set up the enemies so in this case and what you will have in the retail version is just one set of the basic enemies basic minions we are playing against the frog monsters and uh, you will set up uh, minion A, minion B, minion C, minion D, according to the case file. And the enemy card uh, will tell you the basic stats of the uh, enemy. So how far it moves, was its resilience, health, range, 
ranged attack, melee attack, and then uh, it can also have some special abilities. The next thing is to set up the target priority track. So this is the target priority track and you set it up by the threat rating of each agent. So Hellboy has 10, Ape Sapien has 6, so Hellboy will go first, Ape Sapien will go second. So we are getting back to our agents. Um, we got uh, the character cards, we got the minis, we got their tracker busts. Uh, we will put the minis uh, into the starting location. And your characters also start with uh, some basic equipment. So Hellboy has a Hellboy pistol and he has deep pockets. Uh, Ape Sapien has a harpoon and Ape sidearm. These can give you some boosts during the game. These are basically the items that uh, the agent is carrying. And you will also get uh, some extra points for extra equipment that you can buy from the, the requisition deck. I have chosen an ancient blade for Hellboy. This is probably a best weapon for him from the base game. And uh, it tells me that I can upgrade one die when doing a melee attack. And it also has uh, one more special thing there. And uh, I have also chosen a backup agent for Ape and Mystic Sigil for him. So this is the game setup, and now we will talk about how the game actually plays. So I will guide you through the phases of the game and different actions that you can take. All right, so this is the round summary. The round is divided into five phases. Phase one is the enemy phase. If there were any enemies on the board, they would move and they would attack our agents. Then uh, we have an agent phase where our agents will take their actions and they will attack the enemies, they will explore. We will get to the actions in a bit. Then there is a rest phase, which you can, but do not have to take. Uh, in a rest phase, you can do some special actions like um, healing yourself. You can move around the explored areas. Uh, but when you take a rest phase, the impending doom tracker moves further. Then there is a doom phase where you draw a card from the deck of doom. You will resolve it and you will see what happens. It usually moves around the tracker or it, or it can spawn a new enemy on the board, stuff like that. And then there is an end phase where you regain back uh, the actions that you have spent and you will also uh, resolve uh, any lasting effects uh, and do the cleanup. Let's start with uh, the actions that you can take in the agent phase, even though it comes after the enemy phase. So each of your agents has three actions in each round. They are represented by these little cubes. As you can see, Hellboys has red, Abe has blue, and they can spend one cube to do an action. But uh, we, we are starting with the free actions that uh, do not cost anything. So the first one is trade. Um, this is not possible when enemies are in your area and you can give a starting card or requisition card uh, to another agent in your area. You will not use this too much, but there is this option. The second and the uh, only other free action is explore. What you do in an explore is if you are next to a door, so this thing represents a door, you can open it and look behind. And what that does is that it reveals the encounter card. Now, let's talk about the encounter cards. As you can see, each encounter card has four of these red slots labeled one to four, and it will tell you uh, what will you put into this area. 
So um, this room specifically has only two areas. What we do in that case is that we will put one and two into the first one and three and four into, into the second one. So one contains minion B. Minion B is a rampaging frog monster. This one. Number two is nothing. Number three is scenery two. Let me find some scenery two. Okay, so there is a scenery two. The two here is important uh, because it represents the size of the scenery and it has uh, effects because you can throw the scenery, um, enemies can crash into the scenery and uh, they can also hide behind the scenery. So um, it does play a role and four is minion A, which is transforming frog monster. It's the one with the uh, two hands up. And some of the encounter cards also have special rules. Codenapping. The minions in, the, in this room are stunned. Okay, so there are a couple of special conditions that uh, the enemies uh, can be in. One of them is being stunned. That means that uh, you will get bonuses when you attack them. There are a few other things that can appear in the, on the encounter cards. So, so far we had some minions, we had a scenery, but there are a few more things that uh, can be there. The first one is a point of interest. So for example, this is point of interest one. And what this does is that it ties to the mission. So some of the mission cards will tell you what should happen when you interact uh, with a point of interest or if you move into an area with a point of interest. The other thing that can appear here are clues. So since I have a Kickstarter version, I have special tokens for this. And uh, these are the clues which you can uh, investigate and move investigation tracker, which reminds me that I have forgotten to set up the uh, investigation marks there. Give me a second. Okay, so I have the investigation marks here. Okay, yeah, so this case file card also tells me where should I uh, put the inside markers on the investigation track. So I'll, I should put them on the spaces two, four and eight. So two, four and eight. We'll have these inside markers with the BPRD symbols and the insides will help you during the final confrontation of the game. Uh, as you move the investigation marker by investigating the clues, right? Or there are also some other ways to move this uh, tracker. If you get uh, to the space which contains an, contains an inside marker, you will take it. For example, if Hellboy did the action that uh, moved the, uh, ins uh, the inside tracker, uh, he will take the investigation marker. Now, uh, back to the items that can appear uh, as part of the encounter. The last thing I believe there are these frog swarms. The frog swarms are not enemies per se, but uh, when you are in an area with a frog swarm, uh, your dice get downgraded. And uh, also at the, in the end phase, you have to move the uh, doom, uh, doom Tracker further, uh, one space for each two frog swarms on the board. So, you want to clean these, there are special actions to do that. Uh, these were the three actions, we just went through the explore action. Now back to the basic actions, so each of these cost one action point. So, the first one is move. You spend an action point and you move. Each agent can move two spaces. And you move like this. One, two. When there is a big room, you can move also diagonally by going just, for example, one, two. Okay. 
The second action is fight. And now we need to explain how these character cards actually work. So you have four uh, icons here which represent different actions. The first one is fight, the second one is shooting, the third one is an investigation and the fourth one is uh, defending action or test as they are called. And based on the color of these icons that will tell you which dice you can roll. So for example Hellboy when doing a fight test he will take three red dice and this blue special die which is called an effect die and it changes the result right so in this case i have rolled three two and two so that's uh, that would be seven but this skull tells me that i need to discard the highest die okay so that would change my roll to four of course, the higher you roll, the better. Uh, the, each monster has a resilience and uh, health. So, for example, the transforming frog monster has resilience of 1 and health 4. So, let's say that I have rolled this. Um, I subtract the resilience from this roll as well. Uh, so, that would be 3 and the frog monster would be still alive with one health left because it has four health uh, as, uh, in, in the start. What are the other um, phases of this effect die? So there are these, these count just uh, as another numbers for your roll. So there is a number two, there is number one. Then you have a reroll symbol which allows you to reroll any of these dice. And then you have times two symbol here, which uh, allows you to double any of these dice. So in my case, I would double the three, make it a six. That would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And boom, that would kill almost any minion. And the last thing here, is the BPRD symbol. What this one does is that you can choose any of these faces here. So you can choose times two or you can choose plus two or you, or you can choose a reroll, you can choose any of these. And sometimes uh, your agents have special abilities where they can spend this result to do something extra. For example, Hellboy can discard this die uh, to heal uh, two damage. So that was a fight test and all of the other tests uh, work in basically the same way. You have the shooting, same thing. Uh, the investigation is the same thing except uh, you need to roll at least three uh, to move your investigation marker. If you roll six or more you move it twice and then the uh, defense test you roll this when you are being attacked by enemies. That was the fight action. Now the shooting action. You can do a shooting action only when there are no enemies in your area and target a visible enemy in another area then test shooting downgrade one die for each other character in target area or in the path of the shot. Target suffers damage equal to the score minus resilience. Basically, you need to be able to draw a line of sight. Uh, so you cannot uh, shoot from the doors diagonally. But uh, once you explore the area, you can shoot through the door. The next action is examine. And you can do an examine action when you are in an area with a clue. So, for example, if this was here and Hellboy was here. Uh, he would do an examine action, he would roll his dice, he has orange for testing and he would have to roll a three or more. Okay, so in this case we wouldn't be able to get any insight from this clue. The next uh, basic action is interact. 
and you can interact with a point of interest or a special scenery in your area. You do not need to roll anything, uh, that happens automatically and uh, when you interact with a point of interest the case file will usually tell you what you need to do. And the last thing that you can do as a basic action is clear. When there are no enemies in that area, you can remove a frog swarm or an inferno uh, from an area. So, we have talked about the frog swarms. The other thing that can appear there is an inferno. These are not in the encounters, but uh, there are sometimes actions or some characters can set rooms on fire and then the inferno appears. Those are the basic actions. Next, let's talk about the enemy phase. So the enemy phase happens um, before uh, the agent phase. If there are enemies on the board. So let's set up some scenario here. I have a shooty enemy here and two brawlers. You activate them from left to right. So you start with the transforming frog. We do not have that one. Then you go to the uh, next one, which is a rampaging frog. By the way, there can be more than one of the same minion. Uh, at uh, that point, you activate them one by one. So, this is a brawler. This means that he wants to hit you in, into face. And let's also put Abe here. And what he does is that he moves uh, towards you. Uh, he has movement of two. All of these enemies have movement of two. And he tries to attack you. Now the attack by the enemies is uh, resolved differently. They do not roll the dice. They have automatically uh, an attack value of five. But I will roll a die as a Hellboy since I have orange defense. I'm picking up orange dice and I'm taking an effects die and he will be attacking Hellboy because Hellboy is first on the target priority track. So I'm going to roll these dice and I rolled two and I rolled the BPRD symbol. I'm choosing to do uh, a reroll and I will reroll these two dice. Okay, so I have four. This means that uh, since he has attack of five, I rolled four for my defense. I have suffered one wound. Now we need to talk about how the wounds work. Down here on the bottom of the character card, you have the spaces for your wounds. Different agents have a different number of wounds. Hellboy has six. And what you do then is that you take one of these wound markers and you will put it into this space. As I will be getting more and more damaged and my health tracker gets filled like this, if I get uh, six wounds uh, and I will be taking more damage, instead of adding more, I will start flipping these. And each will mean that uh, I will get a degradation to one of my dice. So let's say that uh, I was rolling the orange dice for the investigation test since I suffered uh, a minus one to my investigation test, I will downgrade one die from orange to yellow. So the yellow dice are the worst, the orange dice are medium, and the red dice are the best that you can get uh, normally. But there are also red dice, uh, sorry, black dice, which are even better. So. An average on a yellow die is 0.5, the average on an orange die is 1, the average on a red die is 1.5, and the average on a black die is 2.5. So there is a bigger jump from a red die to a black die. And how you can get a black die? 
you can upgrade uh, your dice by spending actions or your friends in the same area as you can assist you and upgrade your dice. Each dice can be upgraded or downgraded only once. If you downgrade a yellow die, you remove it. You do not draw uh, that die. Uh, there are also some um, items like my ancient blade, which allows me to upgrade one red die, well, and a die during a close combat attack to a black die. All right, so that was the first enemy. Uh, then we need to uh, activate another one. But before that, since Hellboy was attacked, what happens then is that he moves to the back of the target priority track, which means that this next frog, when it moves into that area, will be targeting Abe instead of uh, Hellboy. So Abe would be rolling, since his defense is yellow, he would be rolling yellow dice. But there is a catch. Since there are multiple enemies um, in our area, so for each enemy character, uh, other than the attacker, you need to downgrade one of your dice. So Abe would have to discard one of his yellow dice and he would be rolling just two yellow dice and the effect die. And he would get one, so he would suffer four damage. Okay, these were the brawler enemies. Um, in addition to that, there are enemies that can shoot, such as this venomous frog monster. And instead of moving into this area, he will instead stay where he is because he can, because he can see us and he will shoot at us the same way as uh, he would uh, do a close combat attack. His um, range attack is five. If he couldn't see us or if he was out of range, he would be moving into the range and uh, once he got there, he would shoot. And this is how the enemy phase works, at least for the minions. Now we have covered the basic rules, basic actions that you can do. Uh, and there are a few other things that uh, I didn't mention, but um, you will get to them when you get to them. The last thing what happens eventually during uh, invest your investigation of this case file is that you will get uh, to the final confrontation. What happens then is that uh, you will flip this board, the case file will tell you special things that you need to do, uh, how to set up the big monster enemy. So you can play against the giant frog monster or against the tentacle monster or against Rasputin. Lots of different bosses uh, that you can encounter. The HQ board changes like this. Uh, it now has just the live tracker for the boss. The deck of doom will be replaced by the behavior deck for the boss. Um, and the boss will activate first in uh, each enemy phase. You will flip his card and uh, you will read what the, the boss will do. If you manage to collect any inside markers, uh, they will usually help you uh, during the final confrontation with something like uh, decreasing the monster's resilience or some other things. So he, perhaps he would spawn with fewer minions. This is basically what you need to know to play Hellboy the board game. If you want to see all of the components of this beautiful uh, Kickstarter box, you can check out our uh, unboxing right here. We have a Let's Play coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if I have missed anything important, I know that I have skipped uh, over a few of the rules. Uh, but if there is anything important or incorrect uh, that I said here, please leave that in the comments below so that other people watching this video uh, can read about that.
Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.